Hi, I'm Lily. Today I'm going to read the story called King Arthur. Okay, I'm going to read the story. Okay, let's read it. King Arthur. Sometimes the world needs some special. How the summer is found is often a mystery. King Arthur's tale is not one of mystery. Arthur's tale is not one of mystery. So, when the world needed Arthur, it found him in a magical way such had never been seen before or since. Once upon a time, a thousand years before Christopher Columbus sailed to America, and when Rome was still the greatest city in the world, there lived a brave and handsome young man named Arthur. He hailed from a town not far from London, where he lived in a castle with his father, Sir Actor, and his older brother, Sir Kay. Arthur liked to lie under the trees and gaze up at the sky. Over about him stood Ordux, like giant guardians watching sturdily over the soil where they had grown for centuries. Arthur loved listening to the magic of the forest. Rabbits and squirrels whisking about, a herd of brown deer with the shy dark eyes passing by, or a flock of pheasants with brilliant plumage rising from the bushes. Sometimes there was no sound at all except the fluttering of leaves or the trembling of violets held buried in green moss. In the solitude of the woods, Arthur would dream of one day becoming a noble knight. When Arthur doesn't daydream in the woods, he spent many hours of the day training to become a knight. Arthur learned to hunt, carry a lance properly, and a used sword skillfully. As, as was common for knights in training, Arthur dutifully served his brother and father as a square. He was given important tasks such as caring for their armor and father as a square and accompanying them to tourneys. These skills were combined to teach young skiers the principles of knighthood, service, courtesy, and humility. Arthur noticeably surpassed his fellow skiers in all attributes and was known as the best humble, respectful, and hardworking of them all. At this time, there was no ruler in Britain. The poverty king Arthur, who had governed the people of Britain, had died years earlier, and all the strong lords of the country were struggling to be king in his place. This gave rise to a great deal of squirreling and bloodshed. Fortunately, there was in the land a wise magician named Merlin. He was so old that his beard was as white as snow, but his eyes were as clear as a young child's. He was known across the land for his mystical abilities, and many looked to him for wisdom and guidance. Merlin was very sorry to see or to find him because he feared it would be serious harm to the, harm to the kingdom. In those days, the great and good man who ruled in the church had power, or was he court to that of the march? Merlin went to the Archbishop of Canterbury, the churchman who in all Britain was the most beloved, and said, Sir, it is my advice that you send to all the great lords of the realm and bid them to come to London by Christmas to choose a king. The Archbishop did as Merlin advised, and at Christmas, all the great lords became came to London. There were so many of them that they quite filled the entire cathedral. The good archbishop looked at their stern bronzed faces, their heavy beards, their broad shoulders, and their glittering armor, and he prayed the best man in land would prove as their king. Then began the service. At the close of the first prayer, some of the knights looked out of the window, and there, in the middle of the churchyard, they saw a great square stone. In the middle of it was an anvil of steel, and fixed there was a beautiful sword. Engraved on the sword was writing sad and gore, declaring, "Whoever pulls this stone from this pulls this sword from this stone, and Anvil is the true king of all Britain." After the service was over, the lords ran into the churchyard. They each pulled at the sword, but none could start it. The king is not here, said the archbishop, but God will make him known. The archbishop proclaimed that every man in the kingdom should try to pull the sword from the stone. 
He also ordered that on New Year's Day, all people should be brought together for a great tournament to be held on the south bank of the River Thames, near London Bridge. After a few days spent in jesting among the knights, each man should make the trial to discover whether or not he was to be king. Arthur did not know of the sword. Sir Actor had only told him of the tournaments, but not the reason for the tournaments. So, in this way, Arthur wrote to London aware of the importance of their journey. As they entered the city, Sir Kay discovered he had left his sword at home. This road, he turned to his brother Arthur. Will you go for me my sword? I must have it to compete. I shall with good will, said Arthur. When Arthur returned to the castle, the drawbridge had been raised and he could not gain the warden's attention. Arthur decided, I'll hasten to the charger we pass and take the beautiful sword I was in stone. My brother Kay must have a weapon. He rode straight to the charger, dismounted and strode toward the sword. Arthur pulled eagerly and the sword came with ease from the, an evil. Arthur hurried with the sword to Sir Kay. He knew the weapon at once, but said nothing to Arthur. Sir Kay told his father what happened and the good knight turned into a great respect to Arthur. Sir, he said, you must be the king of this land. What mean you, sir? asked Arthur. Sir Actor toward the wandering youth about the reason why he was destined to be king. Then he asked, can you put this sword back in its place and remove it again? As you wish, sir, replied Arthur. The three returned to the grey stone, and Arthur pulled the sword back as he had found it. Sir I to try to remove it, but fails. Now you try, he said to Sir Kay, who, in spite of his best efforts, also failed. Arthur, as Sir after spitting, tried once again and successfully pulled forth the sword. Sir Actor and Sir Kay immediately fell to their knees before Arthur. Alas, said Arthur, raising them from the ground, my own dear father and my own dear brother, why do you kneel to me? Nay, my lord Arthur, said Sir Actor, I'm not your father. Am I? Long ago, when you were a baby, a mysterious man named Marlin brought to you, brought to me, and to be raised and cared for, exclaimed Sir Actor. It were that you were the son of King Arthur and Queen Irregan. He asked me to guard you in secrecy, lest your life be taken by the Lord's hoping to claim the throne. Sir Actor continued, I did not know whether the story was true or false, but you are a helpless child, so I took you in and brought you up as my own. Arthur could not believe what he was hearing. The three men then went to the Archbishop of the Kent, Canterbury and related to him the story of Malin and or that had occurred. At the command of his archbishop, all the great lords assembled in the churchyard. To prove Arthur's story true, he ordered that each man to try draw, draw forth the sword. Many tried, but all failed. At last, the archbishop summoned Arthur to step forward. He once again drew forth his sword and held it high for, for all to see. Many of the lords could not believe their eyes, and some even became angry at the sight. He is just a boy, he yelled, they yelled. However, none could deny that Arthur was the rightful king. The townspeople fell to their knees, exclaiming, We'll have Arthur as our king, for we say that it is God's will that he shall be our ruler. The people, high and low, rich and poor, knelt to Arthur. He vowed that he would be a good and just king. The people vowed to survey and obey him. When he smiled kindly on them, they shouted joyfully, Long live King Arthur! Long live the king! The newly crowned King Arthur immediately set about writing the word the wrongs done since the death of King Uther. They went to fulfill a legacy unlike any they had come before him. To this day, he is known as a great and honorable man, 
Many consider him the greatest king to have ever arrived. So did I ever just record King Arthur? Okay, bye. Thank you for watching. And there are more posts in this series. Like Moby Dick, a little woman. And... Wait a minute. There are more stories like Family Classics, the series name, and The Three Musketeers, The King Arthur, Moby Dick, The Secret Garden, Alice in Wonderland, Little Women, and Treasure Islands. Okay, next time I'm going to read your book called The Secret Garden or Treasure Islands. Okay, bye. Thank you for watching. Bye.